stories of um, in my own family and just being a priest when somebody dies if you're there I probably have like a hundred stories of when somebody dies before they die they see uh, people in their family who have died it's just this really weird thing anybody else okay it's really not that uncommon so about a month ago um, uh, after this funeral, the person was originally from Cottonwood. Um, this nun, uh, Clarissa, who's just a real sweetie, um, she came up to me and she said, well, there's a story in Cottonwood uh, that this girl died, and, or, and the girl was dying. And as the girl is dying, she sees her grandmother and she sees her cousin. And the family says, no, 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 you, could, you can see your grandmother, but you can't see your cousin because she's still living. And the girl says, no, I see my grandmother and my cousin. And they said, no, no, you can't say that, which between you and I, just, you know, Cottonwood has a lot of Germans. So, like, you're arguing with somebody who's dying. Um, <laughs> but so anyhow, they said, no, no, you can see your grandmother, you can't see your cousin. And she says, no, I see them both, and she dies. And so then they find out afterwards that um, her cousin, actually had died they just didn't know it um and you get like all these that's just one but you get these stories that um so frequently in my family before or the first year i was ordained a priest this girl died and same thing before she died she turned to her mother and said mom she says do you hear it she says it's so beautiful and she said they're here and she reached out her hand and so you get a lot of these stories um that the dead seem to appear as before somebody dies. And I actually believe it. I Really, I should write these stories down. But those close to dying and children, uh, really young children, they often see the dead. Um, and the, that idea is what we call the communion of saints. We as Catholics believe that really the true reality is we're all connected. We're all connected to each other and all those in heaven. Um, they're with us. And I believe, actually, I know young children have seen the dead. I've come across that. And those before they die, they see the dead. I don't think it just happens as you're dying. That is the current reality. We are united with all those even in heaven. Um, it's not going to happen the closer we move to death. I think it's the closer we get free from this life whether it's children or the dying, the dead are always among us, with us. Uh, we're connected to them. St. Paul says we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. He's, the cloud means um, all those in heaven, somehow they're here with us. Um, we believe that as Catholics. Um, as Catholics, when you get... Um, oh, here, I'll ask this way. You know in the book of Revelation, in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel... It says all those in heaven have the Tau, the cross, on their forehead. Um, today's second reading, it says, you know, all those, the angels went and put the Tau on their forehead. When did you receive the cross on your forehead? Good job. Bab we believe so powerfully in baptism that um, if the Holy Spirit runs through me and you and all of you, all of us are connected, and not even death can break this mystical bond. Somehow our lives and their lives are connected. And before somebody dies in last rites, you take the holy oil, and once again, you make the sign of the cross on their forehead, marking them in a citizen of heaven. But here's the reality. We're always connected with them. The, cur the real reality is that all those in heaven and us we live in this union. Um, or in the gospel, in the gospel when it says, blessed are the humble, for the ki kingdom of theirs is, the kingdom of God is theirs. It's not written in the future tense. It's written in the present tense. The kingdom of God is now. It's not when you die you get it. It's now the kingdom of God is. And now do we share in the, really, communion of all the saints. Now is that reality, not later. Um, so as Catholics, we celebrate this. Now, I, you know, 
we as Catholics believe the body of Christ is one. And I never, even when I was a kid, I had friends who were Protestants. And um, they would say, you know, you can't talk to those in heaven. I grew up with it. Yes, you can. It doesn't say in the Bible that there's two bodies of Christ, one in heaven and one here. There's one body of Christ. We are all united together. Their lives and our lives are united as one. And tomorrow night on the Feast of All Souls, we'll have candles up here. Bless them in the memories of um, each candle is, has a uh, memory of somebody who's died. That their light is still with us. Um, we're still connected. And it seems just bizarre to me that in, more in the American society, people don't believe in the communion of saints. Of all the things I really do believe and experienced in my life, that is one thing that always keeps showing up. Whether in children or those who are dying, we live in this mystical communion. And <clears throat> I read this book recently, and this is what I... I read this book, uh, it's a great book, The Big Potential. And The Big Potential, it basically the point is, um, as human beings, we're meant to live together. And you have this odd thing from um, Darwin of survival of the fittest. And even biologists would say that theory doesn't really hold. You know, it, it's not survival of the fittest. It's survival of those who fit. That we survive because we're connected. Um, and in this book, it tells a story that uh, years and years ago in Indonesia, there was this biologist who was traversing um, in Das Hinterland, and he had to get back before nightfall. Well, he didn't. So it's night, and he's in the jungle, and all of a sudden, one whole tree just lights up, just all of a, just bright lights. Then suddenly another tree, and then another tree. And he didn't know what it was. He goes to uh, check it out, and it's um, lightning bugs that land on a tree, and they all light up at the same time. So he goes and he reports this, and other people refuse to believe him, other biologists. And they said, no, in survival of the fittest, you know, you want to bright up so just you can be seen. You wouldn't do that synchronized altogether. And for eight decades, nobody believed him. And then they found, guess what they found out? Yes, the lightning bugs in Indonesia, they light up together. And in MIT did this study, I don't know why, but like if they light up together, the light travels for almost a mile. If it's just one lightning bug, then it just goes a couple yards. Um, and, I, and anyhow, I, I thought that was interesting because people are so caught up with this hyper-individualism that it's just me that needs to shine. And maybe as a species, we work better together. Maybe the true reality is that mystically, we work even better when we're more connected to all those in heaven. So the same way, you know, one little lightning bug doesn't make much of a difference, together we can really shine. And what we pray for on the Feast of All Saints is that we become aware of this great communion with all those in heaven. That it's not going to happen at the end of our life. It's now that, as it says in the Bible, they're surrounding us with our pra their, their prayers. We live in union with them. I always kind of think after so many experiences of the dead appearing to those who are dying, why do I, why do I want to wait until moments before I die to be aware of this? Why not pray that really we can return to the innocence of a child? and live now in the communion of all the saints. And so, together, let us stand and renew our baptismal...